Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to demonstrate how to do Baltic pickup ink weaving. My name is Rachel Vence. I'm known in the Society for Creative Anachronisms as Countess of Thuna Brethrazi. And um, I started doing pickup weaving oh, a couple of years ago, but I've just now gotten back to it and I've forgotten how much I enjoyed it until recently. Um, I did a video, a uh, Facebook Live video, in which we demonstrated some techniques, and at the end I showed what you could do with Baltic, but we didn't have a time to get into it. So this is going to be a shorter video just to go into Baltic specifically and make some assumptions. First being that you have the basics of ankle weaving, um, a basic knowledge of ankle weaving, I should say. So um, I'm going to be referencing Ann Dixon's book. This is the Weaver's Ankle Pattern Dictionary. It's an, a great resource. It has a lot of wonderful bits tidbits of information in here. What we're going to be uh, discussing today specifically is the section on Baltic pickup. Um, so that starts on page 61 in the book about Baltic style patterns and it works off of a um, checkered background and on page 62 in her book she talks about reading patterns and this section about reading patterns and this section down below here um, which describes how you manipulate the pattern threads. This piece right here is what has increased my efficiency in my weaving immensely. So what I have seen a lot of previous uh, pickup style uh, videos and tutorials describe is that you know, in this sem sample pattern that I have here, this is a, a, a Celtic network that you can see, the uh, pattern threads in the warp uh, that you want to have shown are represented here as the white and what I've seen pretty previous videos are describing that each pattern thread is identified as you go through each of the picks but using Anne's um, method as she describes here in the book you are able to make that pick much more efficient by manipulating only the pattern warp threads that you need to. So what is Baltic um, or pickup style weaving for people who aren't familiar? Uh, this is a, a pickup piece that I did. It's directly out of Anne's book. This is Baltic 13-2. Um, so here in her book on page 77, this is the specific pattern. Let me move that a little bit so you don't get the glare. That's the specific pattern. There are 18 picks in the repeat and the, this section of the pattern represents presents from right here on the pattern to right here on the pattern. So uh, about an inch of weaving roughly is what's represented here um, as part of that. And this, um, the uh, there's 13 pattern threads in this, similar to what I'm going to be showing you here in just a minute. So when you are doing um, Baltic pickup, you will warp an ankle womb ankle loom the same as you would do um, for just about anything with only a few minor modifications. So I'm going to pull down this microfiber cloth to help give some contrast. Also my loom's a little slick um, on the table so this will help a little bit. Um, so this is the pattern that I am currently working on. It's what you saw earlier. This is the pickup and here is how the loom is warped. What we have are a total of 13 pattern threads. This is done in a, a normal uh, alternating heddled unheddled style. I have um, six pattern threads that are in the heddled portion and when I lift up you can see I have seven pattern threads that are there. The only major difference when you are warping the loom is with the Baltic style pickup usually you want to use either a heavier um, a heavier string that for your pattern pieces or as I have done here I'm using two of the same crochet cotton that's what I'm using here is standard crochet cotton it's inexpensive it's easy to get um, it's it's fine to work with and for standard things that I'm doing especially if I'm making trim for kids garb um, I don't need to use the silk so much so that works pretty well um, so here I'm using two pattern threads now I treat this as one even though I have two strings are here so in this case this is the the unheddled um, pattern warp so two of these are together here if I drop down these are the uh, heddled and both of these are going through the same string heddled so when we talk about the pattern threads even though there are two individual threads we're going to refer to them just as singular threads there and that's the only difference when you come to warping up 
for a pickup. So here is the warp pattern that I used for this particular one. As I mentioned, there are 13 pattern threads. So what's important to recognize with the Baltic style is while we do alternate the heddled, unheddled, heddled, unheddled, when we talk about a pattern thread, it is always bookended on in the left and the right side by the back Ground. So the background uh, in the case, as you see here, that is the black. Uh, I just have a cable of the red on the side for color, and then all my pattern threads are the white threads that we see. So um, I just do this in Excel. I find it a way to make it quick and easy for me. That way I don't miss when I'm warping. Um, and as I go, you can see little red um, checks through here to indicate that that pattern thread has already been warped. So when we talk a, a, about the pattern thread, we are going to only manipulate the pattern threads themselves. We are not gonna manipulate the two black background threads that alternate each side, but these are very helpful in identifying for us where we need to manipulate the pattern threads or where to find them, I should say, when we go to manipulate the pattern threads. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern um, that I have drafted here. So this was drafted in Excel. I simply have my pick numbers that are here. This particular pattern only has six picks in the repeat. So you could just look at this right here. That is all there is to the pattern. Um, I had extra space on the sheet, so I went ahead and added two more sections. As I mentioned, there are 13 um, pattern threads that I are, have here. So those are represented across the top. And for anyone not familiar with Baltic Pickup, uh, this legend that I add down here, um, I do that just to, to make it simple and easy. Uh, this is what really makes the efficiency is the asterisks that you see. So if we look at this piece, the, just the asterisks, regardless of the color of the box that they are in, the asterisks themselves, this represents where the pattern threads fall naturally within the weaving when you manipulate the shed. Because there are seven pattern threads that I have um, in one part of the warp, and then I have six that are in the other portion of the warp. So let's go back to the loom so we can see that again so that you can um, hopefully make that connection. So right here on the loom, these are my warp, these are my uh, pat pattern threads that are heddled, and I have six of these that are present. So we count the black background thread on each side plus the two pattern threads. We will, as a reminder, only manipulate when we are changing, we only manipulate the white pattern threads, the black pattern, the black background threads will stay wherever they are naturally within the shed, whether they're above or, or below, those will stay right where they're at. So here I've got the six um, different pattern threads and then the portion of the warp that is unheddled, I have seven. So that's what we're looking at when we consider this. So the spotty background that we talk about here, if I were to take this piece and just do a couple of quick lines of weaving, which I'm gonna do right now, do that for two reasons. One, it makes it easy for me to find out where I need to um, unweave, because <laughs> I'm gonna come back here uh, and pick this back up later. So just a couple of quick lines of pass here that I'm going to do with the weaving so that you can get an idea. I'm not beating it as heavily, again, because I'm going to unweave it. And I want you to get a quick idea of what we're looking at. We do. But you can see a bit pretty quickly how we get that spotted background that starts to come up with the alternating pattern threads. So you can see those come up really quickly here as we just do. Do just another quick pass here. One more pick, and then you can see. All right, uh, another thing you may note that I have here on uh, my shuttle is I've got a little piece of painter's tape, and I use a contrasting Sharpie to indicate my width that I want for my weaving. So that helps me stay um, with a consistent tension side to side when I'm pulling my weft thread. And little little tip that helps me here. All right, so when we look at this, you can uh, easily see here we have the spotted background when we make no manipulations to the pattern threads. So we have the row of seven, here we have the row of six, and if we were to continue to weave, that's what we would have. So that helps us in identifying where we are 
and where we want to start. So with this piece here, again, representing the natural placement of the pattern threads as they are in the warp when you manipulate the shed. In this case, my first pick starts with the seven pattern threads represented by the seven asterisks that you see. Now, if I have a pattern thread that is naturally in the correct place, then I need to do nothing to it. If I have a pattern thread that is in the lower portion of the warp and I want to have it as um, the facing portion of the warp, then I need to bring that up or pick up. And if I have a warp thread that is naturally in the upper portion of the warp and I want that pattern thread to not show on the right side of the trim, then I need to drop that or push that down. So represented here on the legend, if I have a blue box with no asterisk, that indicates to me that I want to bring that pattern thread up. Remember, just the pattern thread, not the backgrounds. But I'm going to manipulate that pattern thread. It's naturally in the lower shed, and I want to pick that up. If there is a blue background with an asterisk, that tells me I don't have to do anything to that pattern thread. I simply need to maintain it in its current position, so I do nothing to it. When I get into the weaving here in a moment, you'll hear me say, pass. And that's my way of reminding myself that as I'm weaving, I pass it from my right hand to my left hand as I'm doing my weaving and keep it in its natural position. Where I have a pattern thread that is um, in the upper shed naturally, but I don't want to see it, then I need to drop it down to the lower portion of the shed so that the weft thread will go over it. And that's going to be dropped down, represented as the white box with the asterisk in it. And then the white box with no asterisk indicates that I don't need to do anything at all to that pattern thread. It is in naturally in the lower portion of the warp. It's below the, in the bottom part of the shed and I don't need to do anything to it. So if I look here at this piece, uh, the very first pick that I have, I actually only have three pattern threads that I need to manipulate. Everything else is already in the correct position. So the pattern threads are a total of 13, but remember in pick one, I will only have seven pattern threads that are naturally in the upper portion of the warp. So that will, then I'll, I'll see at that point. So this indicates I need to do nothing to it. The pattern is already in the uh, upper portion of the shed naturally and it stays there. This indicates I need to pick up. I pass or do nothing, pass, pass, this indicates I um, need to pick up that pattern thread. It exists naturally in the bottom portion and I want to bring it up. So I pick up that piece. I pass, I pass, I pick up, and I pass. So I'm actually only manipulating these three represented here on pattern thread 2, pattern thread 8, and pattern thread 12. Now I don't count all of the pattern threads when I'm looking at um, the weaving as I'm doing it. I only look at the pattern threads that are naturally in the upper portion of the shed and use those to tell me what I need to do on the piece. So keep this in mind, we're gonna come back to it um, and I'm gonna set it off the view of the camera here for just a second so that I can come in and get a little bit of that weaving done. So first thing that I wanna check is that I am in the right spot to start the pattern. And remember, I am on the pick that has seven uh, as opposed to six of the pattern threads that are naturally up. And that's what I have represented here. So I've got the seven. Now I don't use weaving swords or popsicle sticks or other things, I know plenty of people who do. For me, I just find that my hands work the best. So what I always do is keep my shuttle in the shed. That helps keep a good separation of my shed. And I just use my fingers to pass. Um, so what I'm gonna do is the first pattern thread, I'm gonna simply pass from my right hand to my left hand, right on over here. Now, as we recall, we've got these background threads and each pattern thread is bookended on each side of it. So it may be a little challenging to see, but I do have the background thread from this pattern thread is stays in its natural shed placement. I never manipulate those background threads. But what I can do with this background thread here and with this background thread represented right here, that tells me right in between those two, there is the pattern thread that I wanna pick up. Right there, that's in the lower shed. So by doing this right here, what I've done is I have picked up 
this pattern thread right here. So it was a pass, pick, pass, 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 and then we get to another pick. So I like to keep my index finger in here. I use my thumb to put my picked up pattern um, threads on. That gives me a cleaner uh, beat when I come down here in just a minute. So again, to start, it was a pass and a pick. Now what I'm gonna do is do three passes. Now sometimes if you see here, it might be a little difficult to see what your pattern threads are. Just go ahead and come up close to where the heddles are. That makes it very easy to separate and make sure that you're getting just the two threads that you want in the pattern. In this case, I'm gonna pass from my right hand to my left hand, three pattern threads. So I'm gonna go one, two, and three. So now I have three pattern threads that are passed. And by going right into those bookends again, I'm going to be able to pick up right down here. That is the second of the pick up piece pattern threads that I need to grab. So that one is represented right here on my pattern. So again, a review, we did a pick one, pass, pick up, pass, 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 pick up. Now we're gonna do pass, pass, pick up, pass. So here we go. I've got three pattern threads that are left here in the upper portion, and I'm gonna pass two of them. I'm going to pick up, Make sure I get my background thread in the right spot. I'm gonna pick up my third and pass my last. So here are my three picked up pattern threads. You can see I have none that are dropped in this particular um, pick that I've got here, but I know I've got those three set and ready to go. So now I'm just simply going to pass my shuttle as I would naturally. And you notice with my thumb here, that gives me a very clean, easy, nice, separation here of those picked up pattern threads that I've got. Now it doesn't look like much just yet. We're gonna need to do a couple more picks before we get there. Now I am on the portion where I have six of the pattern threads that are on the upper portion of the shed naturally. You can see those represented there. I'm on pick two. So if I look at pick two, I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna drop, pass, pick up, pass, drop, pass, pick up. So I'm doing more manipulation on this uh, piece, on this pick than I was in the previous one. So quick review again. So pick up, pass, drop, pass, pick up, pass, drop, pass, pick up. Okay. So that's what we've got in the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Remember, I'm gonna separate right at those background threads, everything that you see right here. This is just my selvage. This is my edge that I created for the trim, All right? So I'm gonna separate those. I'm gonna pick up, then I'm gonna pass, then I'm gonna pick up and pass. Now I'm gonna drop here. So pass that background, because remember, don't manipulate the background. And I'm gonna drop there. Now I'm gonna pass. And I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna pass. And then I'm gonna drop. Oop. There we go. I'm gonna drop. And then I'm gonna pass. And lastly, I'm gonna pick up. Okay, now my thumb got out of place there. So I'm gonna redo that pick because I didn't like the way that went. And I would rather take the time to do it twice and get it right. So let's uh, check that again. All right, so I'm gonna pick up, pass, drop, pass, pick up, pass, drop, pass, and pick up. All right, so now that we've reviewed that yet again for myself, because I often need that reminder, that's why I keep my pattern there. So I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna drop this pattern thread. Now I'm gonna pass and pick up, pass. Now pick up, now I'm gonna pass and I'm gonna drop. And now 
I'm going to pass. And lastly here, I'm going to pick up. Okay, that feels and looks better to me. But I can still confirm it. The beauty of having my thumb right here makes it easy for me to see that I have three threads that I have picked up, three pattern threads that I have picked up. And by our pattern, that's represented here as one, two, and three. And then I can, sorry, three is right here at the end. So those are the three that I've picked up. And then I'm dropping two. So I've dropped one here and I've dropped one here. So I can confirm the three that I've picked up right here, twist my hand over, and if you look right in here, these are the two pattern threads right here. These are the two pattern threads that I dropped. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pass my shuttle just like you would each and every time. Get your stuff down and away you go. Now you can already see that I'm beginning to have some uh, pattern threads here that are, are floating. So they're above and they're not yet set down here. So that float, that tells me that I'm starting to make some, some good um, stretches here of change that are going on. Number three, we've got a pass, pick up, pass, pass, pick up, pass, 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 pick up, pass. So I'm going to go a little more quickly here so we can get through this. So I'm going to do a pass and I've got a pickup. Now I've got a pass and a pass and a pickup. Pass and a pass and a pickup. And then I have just right here at the end by looking the pattern, I don't need to count. I can tell that it's the second to the end that I need to pick up. So I'm not gonna manipulate that any more than I need to. The value of having where the um, the asterisks indicate where the pattern threads are is that I'm only manipulating those ones that I need to do. So I'm now going to do one more pass here. And the important thing is starting to show up here that I can show you on the development of the pattern is that you notice here I'm only seeing background threads in this little section. So I have one, two, three top to bottom and I have one, two, three side to side. I've got two of those that are represented right there. And if I come back to my pattern, that's what I'm looking at here. One, two, three, one, two, three, right on over here, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So that shows me, tells me that I've got things going in the right direction. So following my pattern quickly here, I'm gonna finish out this row of six picks for us. So I am going to pass and pick up, then I'm gonna pass three, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna pick up, you'll see my hand go out of view there just a little bit. It's because I like to go up closer to the heddle threads frequently to go ahead and to grab the, um, the threads. That way I get a nice clear view, but you can do what works for you. So I've got three that are manipulated up here. Keep those up, tighten my weft, and there we go. So you can see that you're gonna continue that out and finish the pattern. So that's why I find having the asterisks and going ahead and drafting out with the asterisks so beneficial. And this was a lesson I recently taught myself. I drafted this pattern off of one that I had seen on the internet. So in Excel, I started with this and then I went ahead and put in, let me show you my first pattern that I did right here. Here's my first pattern. Now, it looks very, very similar, and as, as I pull this up here, you can see that this section and this section are identical with only one difference, and that is if you look where the asterisks are. And this was the lesson that Rachel taught herself, the lesson sometimes you remember the longest, and that is the um, efficiency in the weaving in which I gained. If I manipulated every pattern thread or had to think about every pattern thread, it takes uh, quite a bit of time. And in the initial draft of the pattern that I had up here, this one is the initial draft, you'll notice that I had, sorry, this is the initial draft, you'll notice that I had a lot of manipulation that I needed to do on this pattern. So if we look right down here, again, each of these sections are identical. Um, so right down here, if we look at where my legend is, this tells me that I needed to pick up pass, pick up, drop down, pick up, drop down, pick up, pass, pick up, drop down, pick up, pass, and pick up. 
So I was manipulating almost every thread that we had there as part of that. There were very few that I was just passing. The only ones that I were passing here are these three, right? And otherwise I was having to manipulate these. Well, by simply changing the start of, of the, the shed here and by changing so that I started on the row that has the seven pattern threads as opposed to starting on the row that has the six pattern threads, look at how, more quick, how much more efficient I have because I'm manipulating fewer threads in this pattern. In this row, same pattern, but I'm starting at a different point. Here, I'm only needing to pick up one, two, and three threads. So I'm only manipulating three of the threads. The rest of these asterisks in the blue box, that just tells me I'm in the right spot. So I can use those as an anchor, but I don't need to actually manipulate those. I'm just passing them from left to right. So um, that's some of my favorite lessons that I've learned with ankle weaving, um, doing pickup. When I did this piece here, it would took me roughly nine to 10 minutes to do a section from here to here, which is the eight pick repeat. When I was working on my first draft of this pattern, it was taking me approximately seven to eight minutes to do six little picks. And I knew something was wrong pretty quickly because that was taking way too long. And a quick look at how I had drafted the pattern showed me that I could increase my efficiency. And by changing, simply by starting um, in a different place with my pattern threads, by changing it now I can do these six picks in two and a half to three minutes. So significant improvement in my efficiency of the weaving. So I hope you've enjoyed this and taken maybe a thing or two out of it for Baltic pickup. I by no means consider myself an expert, but I do think I'm proficient at it. Most importantly, I enjoy it. And I hope that that's the same for you too. Have a good day.